So in this video, we're going to have a look at Webmin. It's a web interface that allows you to administer your Linux operating system, lets you look after things like your Apache web servers, monitor disk space, um, and it's a basically a web interface to make some sort of standard day-to-day -day activities of your Linux server a lot, lot quicker and easier. So the first thing we need to do is get a copy of the software. We're going to download a copy from SourceForge using the wget command. I'm going to put all of the commands you're going to need to use in a um, in a file which there will be a link to in the description field of the video. So allow that to download. So once that's finished downloading, um, the file is a .tar gz file which is basically a compressed file. So you're going to want to run the command sudo tar-zxvf and then the file name which will um, uncompress all of those files. So once that's finished compressing, what you're going to want to do is to create a directory called um, var admin, that's where we can actually store um, the web server that is webmin, all the files in HTML and Perl that goes with that. And then once we've created that file, we need to change into the webmin directory that we downloaded and have extracted. And we're going to run the command setup.sh, which is sudo sh uh, setup.sh, and then we're going to put that into the slash var slash webmin directory. And it's going to ask us where we want to store our config files, where we want to store our um, log directories. And then it'll go through the process of setting up the webmin installation. It's going to ask us what port we want to run it on. The default is port 10,000. We'd give it a username so we can log into it. I'm just going to call mine pi and then give it a password. It's then going to ask us if we want to have webmin start on boot. We probably will. We're going to start that. And then it's going to go through the process of copying all the system files over and installing the webmin software. So we've given it uh, a default port we want it to run on, a username and password to log into, and obviously a directory where it's actually going to host the actual little web server that it, that it runs. So once the installation is complete, it will uh, give us the URL that we need to um, log into. Just copy that URL, open up our browser, and obviously if we paste that in. Uh, if you have a uh, host name in for Raspberry Pi, then it will um, automatically load. Whether you might have to type in your IP address, and don't forget port uh, 10,000. Log in with the username and password that we've just created, and you'll be presented with the Webmin front page. So the first thing you'll notice there's a good overview of your system. You'll have the host name, the operating system, the version of Webmin that's running, the system time, the uptime of the system itself, how many processes are running, and things like your um, CPU utilization, memory utilization, disk utilization, which is really useful. You can uh, click on the running processes um, tab. I've just opened that into a new tab. And uh, when we look at that, it will show us what processes we're running. You can click on any of those processes and you can uh, stop, start. Uh, you can change the, uh, the amount of resources it's given. So that's quite a really nice visual way of actually seeing sort of what processes are running on the system. Um, you can also see what software packages um, you've got installed on your Pi. And it will, by default, will select any software packages that um, need updating, so, so there are new versions available. This uses uh, the simple apt, we you may have been used to using on the command line app get um, to install that. You can also schedule those. And you can upgrade Webmin itself if you need to from there. So let's run through some of the basic features. You've got on the system side, you can um, decide what services will boot, um, uh, run on boot when the system starts up. So you can control uh, the boot options of your Pi, which is really useful. So it's in one nice, easy, uh, easy to see place. You can change your password, look at disk utilization, that type of thing, also in there, which is really helpful. So there's our, uh, our partition tables for our system. So there are loads of other things you can do and explore in there. What's quite useful here is the um, web server, webmin web server settings, so you can change the default port if you need to, or the username and password. You can also go to the webmin configuration, which lets you uh, configure sort of settings within webmin itself. Um, nice visually you can do that so have a play um, see what you um, can do on it and in my next video I'm going to show how you can use Webmin to set up SambaShare for a NAS. So if you like the videos like me on Facebook follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the YouTube channel.